Okay, let's get moving. First things first, we just need a daikon radish. Now, unlike the daikon steak, where we wanted to pick out the thickest daikon radish that we could get, this time we're gonna pick out something maybe a little bit thinner, you know, a little bit what you might normally find in say like your local Whole Foods or even like your Asian market. This one's gonna be a lot easier to find. So to get started, all we're gonna do is just make sure this daikon radish has a real quick clean. Make sure any of the dirt that's on the outside is off the outside. If you don't feel comfortable with it, you could use a peeler and just peel the outside, but I'm gonna keep the skin. Now I'm just gonna chop the ends. We don't need the very, very ends. It's okay to lose a little bit. If you've been watching all of the videos that I do, you can see that I've been changing and, and evolving. So I thought that it's now finally time to actually upgrade my daikon bacon radish, the king of all plant-based bacons. So we're gonna follow some very similar steps, but you'll see where things change. Uh, I'm just gonna use my regular peeler here and we're gonna peel off some strips of bacon. Now, the first one is, uh, it's not really the greatest strip. It's always gonna be your second one that's gonna be really good, your second and further. So I'm gonna kinda press down to make sure I get like good thick pieces and this is about what you want. Now you can see, just like I was talking about in the last video with the steak, that the daikon has like a really nice fibrous texture. I think that's what really helps this come up, really helps this become a great bacon replacement. I'm not gonna use all of this for this bacon today. I'll, I'll, I'll slice some up and use it for like um, the daikon pickled pickled salad here. Uh, but for now, let's get let's get about let's get about six six to eight slices. I think is what is gonna be a good base for today. Now, if your daikon's wider than your peeler, you might have to just chop off the edge as you go down, because otherwise you're gonna end up with these really thin slices, which you know work, but we want them to be a little bit better than that. Okay, so now we have our slices. These look pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy about these. Now, this is where the recipe starts to take off. I know, right off the bat, right? So in the original recipe, I salted these. The salting them pulled out a lot of the moisture, also made them a little bit more, um, a little bit more meat-like. They actually kind of salting them, kind of cured them slightly. Uh, but what we're gonna do a little bit different is some things that we've learned from like our jackfruit videos or maybe even our mushroom videos. We're going to dehydrate these. We're not going to entirely dehydrate them. I'm just gonna dehydrate them with like probably my dehydrator's highest setting for about an hour and a half, two hours. I'll check on them. It's gonna help change the texture, but also help these suck in a lot more flavor, which I think at the end is gonna be a win-win for everybody. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can throw them in your oven, throw it at the lowest setting, leave the door open and let it go for maybe two to three hours. It might take a little bit longer. Real quick, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well easy and affordable and has plans to fit every kind of lifestyle, including vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto. The recipes are quick and easy with step-by-step -step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you along. And my favorite part, Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. Now you all have seen me cook Green Chef meals multiple times. I mean, I love cooking with Green Chef. It's always a great experience. I don't have to plan ahead. I get to film for the day and then quickly whip up one of these Green Chef meals and they're always out of this world. I mean, and every single time Green Chef nails these meals. I mean, just look at this. Look at this. This one might be one of my favorites so far. Mm. So let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep for you week after week. So gang, head to greenchef.us slash 90 sauce stash and use code 90 sauce stash to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. Thanks Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. I am always loving Green Chef. Okay, so these have dehydrated and wow, do they look amazing. It only took about an hour and honestly, the texture is phenomenal, just like your piece of bacon would be. Super, super duper. So let's make our marinade now. This is what's gonna make this taste like bacon. <clears throat> so for the marinade, we just need a quarter cup of soy sauce. Now I'm using a low sodium soy sauce because you know it's a decent amount of soy sauce and this stuff's gonna suck it up. So yeah, it's up to you what you wanna use. One tablespoon black vinegar. Now you can use either the black vinegar or like a vegan Worcestershire sauce. Like either of those are gonna work really well three tablespoons olive oil, two teaspoons liquid smoke, which seems like quite a bit, but bacon's smoky. Two tablespoons maple syrup, two tablespoons mushroom seasoning, or one tablespoon nutritional yeast, one teaspoon onion powder, half teaspoon paprika, and about a half teaspoon black pepper. What I'm gonna do is just whisk these flavors up really quick. 
Then what we're gonna do is just lay our daikon into just a kind of a flat like baking dish or just any sort of like flat dish so that way there's enough surface area to kind of cover these all up. And it's okay if they're kind of laying on top of each other a little bit, making sure that they're completely covered. We'll do a second layer, kind of folding them in the opposite direction and then completely cover again. Mm. Gosh, I love the taste of that. Now at this point, I just wanna kinda of just tuck the edges down in, just make sure it's all covered, make sure everything has some of that seasoning on it. So I'm just gonna let these sit on the counter for like the next 30 minutes, let them all, let these bacon daikon strips soak up all of that flavoring. Man, and then we're gonna fry these up. These are gonna be good. This is the new and improved plant-based bacon. I'll tell you, the daikon was the king for so long, and I think this is now gonna take over its reign. I'm so excited about this. I think Monica's gonna love these. Okay, so these have been sitting in their marinade for about an hour or so. They were looking phenomenal. I mean, really, definitely soaked up a lot more marinade than they would have if it just would have salted them and put them in. I think this is going to be the trick moving forward for as far as upgrading the daikon bacon. Now, one step that I haven't tried that I'm actually just gonna try right now, I'm curious. Just like I learned when I made the pepperoni and I just made the recent burger like this, and I'm starting to make a lot more things like this, I'm gonna brush on some coconut oil onto, I'm just gonna try it out. So I'm only gonna do maybe half of these. I'm gonna brush on coconut oil right onto the daikon strips and then throw them in the refrigerator. I'm gonna do it with about four of them here. Actually, I'm gonna throw them in the freezer to kind of firm up and let that oil set into the bacon themselves. I wanna see if this works. I'm gonna let half of them just kind of sit in this marinade for a little bit longer, throw it in the fridge. I'm gonna let the other half here marinate in the freezer with the oil on it so it firms up and they have their own cooking oil. It seems like instead of adding the hot oil to the pan, having the oil already on the bacon and when it melts, it might cook it up even better. So let's give that a try. Okay, so these have sat, they are looking really good. You know, I think the longer that these are in their, their little liquid, the more they're gonna come out really nice and tasty. Let's grab the ones out of the freezer here. And same thing, I mean, these just, they look great. Now these have that coating of oil on them. So I'm gonna get my skillet really nice and hot. The first batch I'm gonna do is the cold coconut oil. I'm gonna see how that one works versus the ones that have just been marinating. Uh, so Monica and I will do those taste tests and that way you'll have like an, a really, just a better way to tell of how much they've been upgraded. And look at the way these things sizzle. Oh my gosh, the ones with the coconut oil look so good. They look so good, they're coming out perfect. We're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil into the pan to cook the ones that are not in the coconut oil. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, they came out really good. Those cooked a little bit quicker because the pan was hot, but I think all in all, we have ourselves some really good bacon. <laughs> oh my gosh, bacon. The daikon bacon is back, baby. It is back. We have two different versions of the daikon bacon. Uh, this is a version, they're, they're close to the same, but I mean, so this one's just, I just wanna find out which one you think is better. Okay. That's really it, just see if we can tell the difference. Sure. Yeah, let's roll. So let's both grab a piece of this bacon. Okay. Now it should be crispy and fatty. It's not gonna be like a big crispy okay, piece okay. of bacon, you know, okay. like think about it like the fatty bacons. Okay, okay so cheers, bacon. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Really good. Way good. Mm -hmm. Like super good. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Tastes like bacon. Yeah. Good crunch. I love the texture. The texture's a little different. It has a bit more of a crunch to it, I guess. That's in part just being like, you know, veggie bacon mm -hmm. um, and this being a daikon. Mm -hmm. um, like on the fatty parts, not the crispy part. Yeah, the fatty parts still have some of that like mm -hmm. vegetable crunch, but. Uh -huh. I can eat this all day. Yeah. Really good. It still more closely resembles what bacon should be versus like some of like the, the rice paper bacons which have chews. Now I'm gonna say this, I've used rice paper bacon all day long. It works really great. Mm -hmm. I just think this works better. Sure. Now this version you can see came out a heck of a lot more crispy. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm. This one's really good too. Yeah, they're both really good. Take another bite. I don't know which one I like better. I like that one better. I but I like this one better too. The, te the crunchy part on this is maybe a little little strong. I think the, the soy sauce cooked cooks a little bit too fast when okay. it's just like directly into the pan like that, where this one has the oil on it and kind of like made it a little bit more mild, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that's what it is. This one did, it came out a lot better. It's like a lot like, it still has the crispiness to it, but then it still has mm -hmm. like the fattiness to it. Yeah, this one's really good. I should have made a lot more of this because then we could have we had BLTs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> 